What's up guys, it's Chris Heria. Welcome to another video. You guys have been requesting for me to do another handstand video. So today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to handstand in five easy steps. Let's head to the back of my balcony. There's gonna be no equipment at all involved so you guys can get started with me. I'm gonna show you from the very beginning how to start training properly for your handstand. Once you've unlocked the handstand, you're gonna be unlocking insane upper body strength body control and balance. And it will unlock more exercises and advanced movements as well, like the handstand push-up, one-arm handstand, and 90-degree handstand push-ups. You can't do any of those exercises until you've mastered the handstand hold. Now there's three components when it comes to mastering your handstand hold. That's upper body strength, form, and balance. You're gonna need enough upper body strength to be able to hold your entire body weight upside down on your arms, as well as enough endurance to hold it for an extended amount of time. And this time under tension is what's special about the handstand hold that really develops crazy shoulder strength. But if you haven't developed the proper shoulder strength to be able to start learning how to handstand, you're gonna be struggling just to hold the position. So that's why it's important that when you're starting to learn how to handstand hold, that you've already developed the required upper body strength needed to hold a handstand hold against the wall, comfortably without struggling. To really excel and learn fast as possible, you wanna be focusing on your form, not focusing on trying not to fall. That's why the very first step to mastering your handstand is building the correct upper body strength. And the way you can start doing that from scratch from the very beginning is to hold a pike hold position. Let me show you really quick what that looks like. Starting from a push-up position, walk all the way up until you're in a complete pike. All right, now you can see I was in a straight line from my hips to my heels, as well as from my hips to my hands. Being in this position is gonna distribute a good amount of my upper body weight onto my shoulders, getting comfortable with being upside down and developing strength and more endurance in my shoulders for the handstand hold. Now, after holding the pike hold for a while, you're gonna hold this position longer and it's gonna get more comfortable, meaning that you strengthen your shoulders and you're ready to move on. The next step would be to elevate the pike hold, put your feet onto something higher. When you've elevated this position and your feet are on a higher surface, you're putting even more body weight onto your shoulders, making this exercise a lot more difficult, but also getting you closer to holding your entire body weight more comfortably. Now, once you've been training the elevated pike hold for some time, you would have developed a significant increase in your shoulder strength and endurance. So now you would be ready to start training, holding your entire body weight upside down. And one of the first moves to get you started with that you can develop strictly strength and endurance, that exercise is gonna be wall walks. Let me show you what that looks like. Come down from a push-up position, walk up the wall, small steps. Come as close to the wall as you can. Hold. Make sure to press down in your shoulders. Small steps. You notice that I start in a push-up position with my feet close to the wall. From here, I'm gonna take one step onto the wall and then I'm gonna put my other foot on as well in small steps while maintaining a straight line in my body by engaging my core. And I'm gonna walk up all the way until I reach the top of the wall, having my body as close to the wall as I can and having my hands as close to the wall as possible. If you're pressing into your fingertips while your hands are on the floor, you're gonna find that it's easier to stay stuck onto the wall and you won't find yourself coming back forward. When you're first getting started, of course you wanna go up as high as you can if you can't go up all the way, the more you train this, you'll be able to walk up higher and higher with better form. And once you're all the way at the top against the wall, this is actually one of the best forms to hold a handstand. Your body is completely stacked on top of itself from your hands to your shoulders, from your hips to your feet. And this is exactly how you want to be stacked when holding a real handstand. If you've been able to master the wall walk at least three consecutive in a row and hold it all the way to the top with perfect form, be able to hold this position for at least 20 seconds, then you've completed the first step, which is developing the proper upper body strength and now you're ready to move on to learning the correct form. So the progression we'll be using is gonna be handstand kick up. Let me show you what that looks like. Now to break down this movement, let's start from the beginning. We're gonna start in a push-up position. Bring one leg up and now we're in a runner start position. Now that one leg that you brought up will be kicking off and the opposing leg will stay straight and will be swinging up. Remember, your body needs to be stacked when holding a handstand. You also wanna make sure that your fingertips are spread wide apart. With the firm, secure grip, 
on the floor. You also want to make sure that your head is slightly in front of your hands and your shoulders as well because if your head is too far back, again, you're not going to be aligned. You're going to kick up and you're going to come right back down. So while doing this exercise, you should actually be looking down at the floor and never look away from that one spot. So the placement of your hands and where you're looking should actually make a triangle. So you want to be as controlled and still as possible while you're going up as well as when you're actually up. And probably the most important rule is that once you're up into that handstand hold, you need to keep your arms straight. If your arms bend at any time and you didn't already immediately fall down, then it's only a matter of time until your arms start bending even more, even more, and your body caves in. Lastly, when you kick up into this exercise, you want to make sure that you're leading with your hips. Your feet and your legs follow right after, making you fall into a straight line. Because when you're doing a handstand, you actually want to fall in place into that handstand. You don't want to be kicking and slamming into the wall. You want to use the exact effort every single time so that you kick up into the handstand and you fall into place onto that handstand. So once you're able to master this handstand kick up, you can do it with perfect form and you're giving the perfect amount of effort to fall into that handstand. Then you're ready to move on to the third step and that's going to be really practicing our balance for the first time. So this next progression is called handstand finger press and this is going to first teach you how to start steering in your handstand. When you're in a handstand hold, you're either going forward or you're going backwards. Doing this handstand press is going to show you how to push your body backwards. So if you're falling forward, you'll know how to control your body and bring your body back to a balanced position. Let me show you what that looks like. Now for the first time, we're actually trying to steer and control our body being upside down. And now we're starting to slowly get away from the wall. So what you want to do in this exercise is to start pressing on your fingertips hard enough so that your feet eventually pry off the wall and you bring your body all the way back down to the floor. Make sure to keep your arms straight the whole entire time as well as your legs because once you've left the wall and you're beginning to come down, you want to bring one leg down straight and then the other one, you'll be able to come down safely. You need to have your core engaged, your glutes, your calves, and you need to be pointing your body and extending your body as hard as you can. The straighter you are, the more engaged and contracted your body is, your body's gonna work as a unit. It's gonna be a lot easier to manipulate your body's direction and weight. The whole point is to pry off the wall strictly just with your fingertips and maintain a perfect handstand position. When pressing with your fingertips, it should feel like you're pressing on a keyboard as well as you're trying to grab a ball. So like this, you see we're going to grab and we're going to push and press with our fingertips. Now a good indicator to know if you're doing this correct or not is to get on the floor and from this position, leaning forward with our arms completely straight and depressed in our shoulders, we're going to press with our fingertips and press hard, hard, hard enough that our body starts to come back. This is one of the main movements when it comes to handstand balance. So master this movement. You want to be able to do at least 15 consecutive repetitions against the wall in a row. If you can successfully complete this with perfect form comfortably, then you're ready to move on to the next step. That's going to be the handstand finger press and release. And this exercise is going to show you how to move forward in a handstand hold, the opposite of what we just learned. So last time we pressed our fingertips down into the ground to bring our bodies back. This time we're going to continue to press into our fingertips until our feet pry off the wall. But once we feel that our body is in a stacked, perfect handstand position, we're then going to stop pressing in our fingertips and actually release the pressure from our fingertips. And now you should feel the majority of your body weight in the palm of your hand. Once you do that, your body is going to actually go back towards the wall again. Once you feel your body go back towards the wall, everything is going to click in your mind. And now you're going to realize that to hold a handstand, it's a constant battle of pressing in your fingertips and releasing. Your body actually constantly falling forward and falling backwards, and you constantly contracting and engaging, pressing and releasing with your fingertips to maintain this handstand position. I want you to try to hold a handstand position with your feet about this wide away from the wall. If you feel like your feet are getting closer to the wall, you're going to press in your fingertips. If you feel like they're getting too far back, you're going to release that pressure. You basically want to teeter-totter to find yourself holding right in the middle for as long as you can. If you've been practicing the handstand kick up simultaneously with this exercise, you should be able to kick up into the handstand and probably not even touch the wall or at least get super close, slightly touch it and then immediately get into holding your handstand. If you happen to touch the wall, that's perfect. Just come back off and try again. If you touch, come back off, try again. All right, so I really need you guys to master this move right here because this is when you're really gonna start mastering your handstand hold. You wanna be able to hold a handstand without even touching the wall, lined up right next to the wall for at least 
20 to 30 seconds. This is probably the toughest progression to master, but once you've mastered this, you've really mastered your handstand hold. You'll literally be holding a handstand once you've been able to master this successfully. The last thing that you'll just need to learn how to do to take it off the wall is to learn how to dismount. This is also gonna release the fear of you falling forward and you're gonna be able to eventually do handstands everywhere. Like when you see my bro Zay doing it on the balcony railing, that's because he's really mastered his dismount. So before I move on to the last fifth and final step on how to dismount for your handstand, I wanna give you guys one last tip in combination with the handstand finger press and release to make sure that you're using proper form when doing this exercise. And when holding a handstand so you can make sure that you're actually in a perfectly straight line versus holding it in super arched with bad form. So I'm gonna show you guys really quick against the wall. When we're in a handstand and a lot of times when we're practicing handstands against the wall, just being in this position is gonna automatically force our bodies to be a little bit arched because where we place our hands on the ground is before where our feet goes. So it's important to have a mental awareness of where your hips are when you're upside down. That's what's gonna really determine if you're in a straight line or not. And the way to feel that while still standing on your feet is to go up against the wall, pretend like you're in a handstand position just like this, long and stretched as you can. You're gonna push your hips to the wall, just like that. Now when you go like this, you're gonna feel that you're kind of at an angle, you're not in a completely straight line, but that is actually the perfect form that you wanna be in. And that slight bend in your hips is really what you wanna look for when you're upside down in your handstand. Because when you do it upside down, you're gonna be inverted, so your body's actually gonna wanna do the opposite. You might do that upside down. So really get used to this movement right here. Okay, so from an arched position, if you bring your hips back, you can see how you immediately get back into alignment. Arched hips back. So keep that in mind when you're practicing your handstand holds. Once you've mastered the handstand hold against the wall, I'm going to show you guys the last step. Dismount. Let's go into the house. All right, guys, we're back inside. I'm going to show you the last progression to mastering the handstand hold. That's going to be the dismount. Now first, let me show you what it looks like. And that is the dismount right there. That's the last piece to the puzzle for mastering the handstand hold. If you can do this, then you can virtually do a handstand anywhere on anything and be comfortable and secure while doing your handstand, knowing that you can come down safely at any moment. When you're doing this exercise, we're actually gonna go up into a handstand hold and hold that handstand before we dismount. Even if we're gonna hold it for a second or even if you feel like you're falling really, really slow, that's actually gonna be perfect for just getting started. Basically what you're doing in a dismount is you're going forward into your handstand hold, trying to come to that perfect balance point and holding that position by constantly pressing and releasing with your fingertips, moving slightly back and forth. When you're ready to come down, you must first pass that invisible straight line balance point, meaning that your body weight needs to be more in the front side than the back side. And you should feel gravity actually starting to pull your body forward. You can slow down how fast gravity actually pulls your body down forward by pressing in your fingertips. That will slow it down and if you press hard enough you may even be able to bring your body back. We're actually trying to pass straight as slow and controlled as we can and once you feel like you've significantly passed that straight line, you're then going to turn your hips to the side that's most comfortable to you and with the same leg on the same side, you're then going to separate that leg from the other one. As you're turning your hips, you're going to go ahead and put that leg down first. Once that leg reaches the floor, you can go ahead and put the other one down as well. And that is exactly how you dismount. Just find what side is gonna be more comfortable to you. You can easily do that by practicing your handstand. If you can't hold a solid handstand before dismounting at the very beginning, keep doing this exercise and you're definitely gonna work your way up, falling slower, more controlled, until one day you're able to really control it and just bring it back and keep it balanced. And that's basically how you dismount and that's how you handstand in five easy steps. So I'm gonna go ahead and break it down for you guys. I'm gonna show you the handstand kick up, the finger press, finger press and release, holding the perfect handstand and then finally dismounting. If you guys follow these five steps perfectly, then you should be able to do what I'm right about to show you. There you go, handstand hold with a dismount. Congratulations guys on mastering your handstand. If you guys are still having trouble on the handstand hold or you want a complete step-by-step, -step, easy to follow guide, you can go ahead and get it at thenx.com along with other technique guides that we have like the muscle up, human flag, where you can learn step-by-step. -step. And I'll actually be posting a handstand workout on my Harriet Pro app for all of you that want to continue training your handstand and need a good workout routine to take your handstands to the next level. The Harriet Pro app is where I post all my personal workout routines and workout programs. So if you want to do what I'm personally working out every day, every week, 
intake every month, download the Harrier Pro app and get full access to all my personal workout routines. And comment down below, let me know what move you want me to break down next. Remember, I post every Thursday, 2 p.m. USA Eastern Time, and if you comment within the first 30 minutes, you always have a chance to win some free Harry apparel. And right now, we have a brand new collection that's coming out, brand new Harry hoodies, joggers, chinos, new weight vests, and a lot more. If you guys are enjoying the music on my channel, I'm going to be releasing it soon on my SoundCloud. Go ahead and give me a follow when I reach 10K subs. I'm going to be releasing all this music. So till then, I'll see you next Thursday, 2 p.m. USA Eastern. Mad love. Peace out. I'm going to make this time go Rolex.